Hey everyone, I'm Shane, and here at eTrailer, we install, test fit, and review different products to hopefully make your decision or installation much easier. Today I have a 2015 Jeep Compass, and I'm going to walk through how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. This is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. The cross tube is completely in behind the bumper fascia. The only thing we really see is our receiver tube, so it helps maintain a nice clean look. Adding a Class 3 hitch onto your vehicle like this is going to give you a lot of different options. Maybe we have bikes and we're getting tired of loading them inside because when you load them inside we really don't have room for passengers anymore. Maybe we don't want to get a roof rack because we don't want to put our bikes up on top of the roof each time. This is going to allow us to get a bike rack and load or unload our bikes much easier. Maybe we want to put a cargo carrier on it. Get some of the items from inside to the outside to make more rooms for our passengers. Or maybe you want to pull a small trailer. This hitch is going to allow us to do all of that. It's going to be a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening, so it's going to give us a lot of different options for hitch mount accessories. We're going to have a reinforced collar to give us a little extra stability. Rolled steel safety chain loops. You can see we have very large openings that will accommodate some of your larger size hooks. Our hitch pin hole, which is here, it's going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. Take the standard 5 8 hitch pin. Hitch pin and clip does not come with this hitch, however it can be found here at eTrailer. It's going to be a steel construction, black powder coat finish, so it's really going to hold up well against rust and corrosion. Now I'm going to give you a few measurements and weight capacities to help you when deciding on any of those hitch mount accessories. Again, like your bike racks, ball mounts, and cargo carriers. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper fascia, it's going to be about 7 inches. That number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories like your bike racks and cargo carriers that are going to fold up against the vehicle. You want to make sure they're not going to make contact. From the ground, to the top innermost part of the receiver tube, we're looking at about 13 inches. Keep that number in mind. For any of your hitch mount accessories, it may require a little bit more ground clearance. As far as our weight capacities go, we're gonna have a 400 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. So whether we're putting a trailer on or we're filling up a cargo carrier, we're gonna make sure we're not exceeding that. We're gonna have a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is the trailer plus the load included. I always recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle. Make sure the vehicle can withstand the amount of weight. We're going to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk through how to get it installed. To start your installation, we're going to remove the four pushpin fasteners along the bottom of the fascia. You take a flathead screwdriver, trim panel tool if you got one. Uh, if you look right here, there's going to be a little notch that you can get underneath that center section. We'll pry the center section and then pull out the base with it. Next, we're going to take a strap. You can hang it from your springs. You want to make sure you're going underneath the exhaust. And we're going to cinch that up. We're going to take some silicone on your passenger side right here. We're going to have a hanger we're going to pull off the stud. And then we're going to have one on the driver's side, more towards the axle. Spray it down with some silicone. We're going to take a pry bar and you're just going to work one end of your rubber isolator off that pin. We're going to do that on each side. And then we have a third one right up here toward the middle of the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead, it doesn't say this in the instructions, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one, same as I did the other two, just to allow my exhaust to uh, hang down a little bit lower. You just want to make sure when you take this one off, you have it supported. You don't want to let this hang free because the only place it's going to be hanging from is up here. And you don't want to damage it. Next, we're going to temporarily remove our heat shield. We're going to take an 11 millimeter socket. We're going to have four nuts here, here, and then two right up here. We're going to have two holes in each frame rail. They go all the way through here and then one here. You're going to have that on both sides. You're going to take a long hex bolt. You're going to put a flat washer on. We're going to go from the outside. We're going to slide it through like that and then let it rest. You want to make sure the end's not sticking out. We're going to do that in each one of our holes. And then we, once we get our hitch up into place, we can take this, slide it over into place, and it'll support the hitch. Now we're going to 
slowly start to work our hitch up into place. What I'm going to do is once I get it on up into place, I'm going to take the very most forward bolt. So the one that's closest to the axle, we're going to put our hitch in and we're going to slide those two bolts in because we're going to use this to measure out where we need to cut on our fascia. So I'm going to take one of my flange nuts, I'm going to install it all in that bolt. That way my hitch or the bolt doesn't slide out. So now I'm going to take my hitch, I'm going to push it up just like that, and we're going to mark it on each side. Since I don't know how high I have to go, I'm going to go to about where this first bend is. We'll cut that out and we'll raise it up if we can get our hardware in and it's not putting any pressure on our uh, bottom part of our fascia here, then we're good to go. If we need to trim more, we can. I'm just going to use a rotary tool with a cutting blade to cut that out. that off, you can take a utility knife and all the little burrs and stuff that are hanging off there, just run it down the edge and that'll clean it up. Now we'll raise our hitch up so we can get that bolt in on each side and then we'll come back and take a look to make sure it's not putting too much pressure on the fascia itself. Once you've checked it, made any adjustments necessary, you can go ahead and reinstall the second two nuts on the other two bolts. And we'll take a three quarter inch socket and wrench and we'll tighten the hardware down. And to make it a little bit easier to torque our bolts down and to tighten them, the canister on your passenger side, you're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut here on the back side of it and a 10 millimeter nut on the front. We're just gonna uh, allow that to come free, get us a little extra room. That'll give us enough room to get up in here with the torque wrench. Once you get everything tightened, you'll come back and you're going to torque it to the specifications and the instructions. Once you get your hardware torqued down, you can come back and reinstall everything in reverse order from the way you took it off. Once you've got your exhaust reinstalled, you can go ahead and remove your strap, and you're ready to go. It's going to do it for a look at an installation on the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver on a 2015 Jeep Compass.